All your bases, I belong to us. <laughs> See you on the other side. This week, I want to talk about basing. This is not something that I am 100% happy with. I find it very difficult and sometimes I'm just lost for inspiration. However, working on a large project like my Dark Angels company, I wanted to have a consistent approach to my basing that was easy to replicate, something I could do en masse, ideally before I painted the models. I had a theme for my Dark Angels army. I don't know if you know much about the lore of the Dark Angels, but originally their Primarch, Lionel Johnson, was raised on a planet called Caliban. That planet was not very hospitable. It was jungly, overgrown, lots of monsters, but it was inhabited. Having a chat with my friend Russ, enjoyed Incubus. Link, check him out, Ultramarines fan. He suggested that I could maybe do a homeworld theme based for them, where even though it wasn't Caliban, it was an Imperial world that had been overgrown and nature was taking it back. I really liked the idea, it kind of fit in with the aesthetic I was going for, everything's going to be Primaris, so it had this new but old feel to it, and I thought it was something I could do relatively easily. Using Citadel Sector Imperialis base sets, I could work on top of those, add features, and get the majority of the bases that I needed done in one fell swoop. How did I do that? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. Let's get to the painting desk. Right then, let's crack on. I'm going to airbrush the first couple of stages of this and I've picked out some colours. So some earthy tones, a black and a brown. It doesn't really matter what you're going to go with there, just pick out something that's going to work with your scheme. Right, so first thing is we're going to base coat everything in black. Just taking it all over, making sure we're getting all of the angles there. Right, first coat. We're going to get this brown and we're just going to lay down the foundations. So what I'm going to do is just pick a couple of spots on the base Nowhere in particular to be honest, just a couple of varied places and lay down a nice light spritz in, not going too heavy in one spot, just to start giving some detail and texture to the base that we can use as a foundation as we build up to these lighter colours. So I'll pick a couple of spots, hit them and then pull the airbrush back. Right, next up a little bit of a lighter tone, I'm using burned flesh here from Vallejo and all I'm going to do is hit the middle part of the brown tone we laid down in the previous step, leaving a little bit of that brown there just so that it's not completely disappearing. And it just adds a nice gradation, a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest to the base. I know it looks really light at this point, but don't worry, it gets knocked back in the later stage. Always working in thin layers. Don't overdo it, you end up with spider webbing here. The easiest thing to do is a little bit of a spritz, let it dry, let some earth flow through there, and then come back and then build up saturation with many thin coats. Okay, yellow ochre this time. Again, we're going lighter up on that spectrum and we're gonna do exactly the same as we did before. So working a little bit smaller, a little bit closer, making sure to leave some of the previous color showing. As you see, we're building up a saturation. What you notice as well is, as we're doing this, we're actually cheating a little bit and we're building up some of those natural highlights on the edges. That really helps later on when we come in with a dry brush and put the dry brushing on there to further accentuate that. It just gives us a little bit of a guide and a little bit more visual interest overall on the finished base. So again, take your time here, working in small increments, letting it dry. Next colour then, we're working up that spectrum again still, remember, getting a little bit lighter this time. And what we're going to do is exactly the same again, a little bit closer, a little bit lighter this time. So we don't want to overdo it with this colour. Notice how we've got three or four spots here towards the centre of the base and I've got one towards the right of the base as well, just on the lip. It works much better if you have a couple of spots around the base rather than concentrating them all in one area. I find it adds a lot more visual interest and makes the mini overall look much better once we get to the final step and we get it on, on there with the base. Bearing in mind we are going to be putting a couple of embellishments on here afterwards. And that's the airbrushing stage done. Right, Citadel Armageddon Dunes is one of the technical paints and it adds a little bit of texture to the base here. Now, other suppliers do have this, Vallejo, MIG, AK Interactive, that you can get all over the shop. This just happens to be what I had on hand while I was working on these bases. Now, what I want to do is try and replicate dirt, sand, 
organic matter taking back over this this techno looking base so just spread it around something that looks a little bit interesting i don't want it all in one place on this one but you know go with whatever you feel works for you for you your basing theme and once it's on we need to leave it to dry for about 30 minutes um, even an hour sometimes now once that's all done i'm going to go back in with some type of corrosion another Citadel technical paint now with your brushes use an old brush for this it will destroy brushes and what i'm doing is i'm just dabbing it on now this is to replicate rust and corrosion I do find the stippling motion works much better to get a reasonable effect with this paint rather than just painting it on. Also, try not to go, just go too thick, it can really be overpowering. So go sparingly, go light, you could even mix it with some water, but it is very heavily textured. Just bear in mind this is going to be the metallic parts for later on. Right, okay, easy one. Citadel's Agrax Earthshade, I love this paint, all we're going to do is put it all over the entire base, so it's a super easy step. But then what I need to do is make sure it doesn't pool in any one place. All I want to do is apply a filter and get some recess shading in the deepest parts. What I don't want to happen is for it to take over everything because it is quite strong in that respect. So as it's drying, just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it and move it around if you need to as it's drying. Once that's done and dry, we can get on to the next step. So I'm using Citadel's Dry Paint Tyrant Skull here, but you can use any sort of ivory off-white that'll work just as well. What I'm doing is I'm dry brushing, hitting all of the edges of the base, especially the outer rim. I really like the kind of effect that that gives, it almost frames the minute. And I'm not dry brushing in any particular direction here, I'm just making sure I lightly hit all of the surfaces. It's quite a good, fun, easy um, step is this, especially if you're doing a lot of bases, like 150 of them for example. So just whack on an audio book, sit back, relax and get this step out of the way. Okay, let's make the bases come to life now. Again, I'm using another set of dry paint, Necron Compound here, another colour I absolutely love. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stipple this dry paint on in a few of the areas where we've already placed the typhus corrosion down. Now, just be mindful here that you only really want to do it where the typhus corrosion is. It's going to show through the metallic a little bit stronger, because obviously it's got a darker undercoat there. And it just gives that metallic, crusted paint looking effect without going too deep into the weathering techniques. It's nice and fast and quite effective. Another Citadel dry paint here, Riser Rust. You can use any orange though, you don't have to use one of these. Now this is a very heavily pigmented dry paint so go a little bit sparingly and all I'm going to do is again, using the stippling technique, I'm going to build up layers of it. So we're building up the intensity much like we did with the airbrush and very sparingly around the base to give the impression of rust. I'm going to hit the metallic areas um, just on top of that typhus corrosion just to add a little bit of colour and interest. Next up, you guessed it, another technical paint, it's Nylac Oxide. Now this is a very strong paint so what I'm going to do is get some on my palette and thin it down with a little bit of water and flow improver mix. Just using water is fine though. Um, I go for about 50-50 mix of this making sure to load my brush up and get a good point on it. I want to be quite accurate with where I'm applying this and we're going to go back to the base and very sparingly run it into the recesses where we think the water would collect and pool. Again I'm using where I've put the typhus corrosion as almost a guide as to where I want to use this. The trick is not to overdo it. Now this is the last step on the painting part of the base. Next up we're going to go with some embellishments. If what you've done so far fits your theme, you could absolutely leave it here, no trouble. But for me, I want to introduce some more nature, so that's what we're going to do. Citadel's Barbed Bracken. Now, I love this stuff. It's a soft, pliable plastic and, and a really good alternative to grass tufts, which I'm not a massive fan of. Now, you've noticed I've painted these on the sprue. I've not covered that process in this video, but if you do want to know how I painted these up, uh, leave me a comment and I'll put something together. I would strongly recommend using a pair of very sharp snippers for getting them off the sprue. It's a little bit of damage to them, but that's easily touched up and I find painting these en masse on the sprue is much easier than trying to paint them in situ on the base or individually. But that's just me, you can do what you want. Um, there are other plants that you could use, but for me, just for consistency and ease, using these is much easier. Also, there's an alternate product as well that Citadel sell. Um, I think it's called Creeping Vines, which you can use as well. Attaching them to the base, I just use a little dab of super glue, just on the underside here. 
get a little bit on and place it on the base usually somewhere where we put that armageddon dunes so you won't put it somewhere where there's none of the organic parts that look a little bit silly there but the idea is nature's taking back the bases it's encroaching on this imperial built city um, that's now abandoned so it's growing in odd places and then i use a little bit of these small leaves just dry fitting first seeing where it's going to look good before again putting a little dab of super glue on there and putting in place and there we are that's the basing theme for my dark angels done let's take a look at it in situ and let me know what you think down in the comments That was a slog. Doing 150 odd plus spaces. Yeah, it felt good to get them finished off and I know now I can just kind of Do you have any tips that I might find useful? Let me know down in the comments. If you've not already, please do give me a subscribe, leave me a thumbs up. If you know somebody that might find this video useful, please do share it with them. That's it for this week, guys. So, I guess all that's left to be said is if you're gonna do crap, make sure it's plastic. See ya.